Oh, hello. Is this Mac Hewitt? Yes. May I ask who you are? My name is Inspector Tom Rowland. I received a case yesterday, and it seemed way beyond my capabilities. I was wondering if you might be able to come and help me out. Well, I guess I have some time to spare. Where shall I meet you? Oh, magnificent. Come to 258 Lawland Street. Peter Falcon, age 26, was found Wednesday night on his friend's floor, dead. His friend immediately called police, and we arrived to see the state. As you can see, he has numerous marks to his face, but all of his internal organs are untouched. He has no knife wounds or any marks around his neck. He is in no state of any serious or fatal damage. Where's his friend, anyway? I can go get him for you. We have already questioned him, but have found nothing. Okay, so I guess I can give it a shot. Oh, and while I'm there, can you give me a handful of witnesses, please? Consider it done. How exciting. A dead body found in another's house. Without any signs to the cause of the death. I could already tell before we started but this was going to be a very interesting mystery. I know I thought of the other dance points to me, but truly, it wasn't. Okay. Assuming that I did believe you, what exactly happened that night? Okay. Peter came to me the other night. He was sad. I bet I never asked why. Done, we had a couple of beers together. Shortly after that, I had to go take a leak. While I was doing that, while I was there, I heard screams. So I ran, I ran back out to the womb. But when I got there, Peter was dead on the ground. I immediately called police because, well, I was scared. I didn't know what had happened, you know. And there was no evidence of forced entry? No. All the windows and the doors were still locked. There was no signs of breaking an entry. I had no idea how he had gotten in. So? He's innocent. Although I can't say for sure. So now what? You still have those witnesses, don't you? Yes. Okay, so, Aaron? Okay, look, I didn't kill nobody, okay? Okay? Calm down, calm down. I'd just like to know what you were doing the other night. Oh, okay. Um, the other night, I took my midnight jog. Okay? I listened to my iPod and go, Hey, yo, we sing, hey, yo. Anyway, I got to this house, and I heard this, this scream, well it wasn't really a scream, it was like, <laughs> it must be really loud, because, you know, I have my ear in my eyes, it doesn't work. Anyway, then I saw this blood spot all over the windows, it's like, ew, gross, but I didn't get time to investigate, because, well, I had to be home before seven because my mother was making her famous meatballs. So that's all I saw. Okay, thank you for that. No problem, mate. Just don't arrest me, and we're cool. I saw a ghost. Pardon? I saw a ghost. You're gonna have to explain. Okay, I was out in my garden last night, and the night before. 
I was pruning my edges, okay? And as I was doing so, I saw the sphere. And what he did was he went through the door. He didn't open it, he didn't knock it down, he went through it. A ghost. Okay, so the witnesses didn't go quite as planned. But I still had other tricks up my sleeve. I thought I'd pay the family house a visit and see what I could gather from there. fighted a bit, but the, he wouldn't have killed him. Please, mister. I was only sorry that you disturbed me before. Um, about the other night, well, before my brother left, he looked sad, you know? He said, um, what do you say? That he lost his friendship or something? Yeah, I was like, oh yeah, whatever, you know, <laughs> get back to pop my music. But then that happened to me, it was, it was a sad time, you know, it was so sad. No, there was no suspicious activity or anything. He just left that night saying, bye mama, bye mama. But we still had that bond. That childhood bond, that bond that all of you want. I love these bonds. They're good bonds. It's a hard moment for both of us. Me and my son. Without Peter around, he don't know what to do. I don't know what to do. It's so hard, you know. It's so hard. Hard being, it's hard being a kid. Peter was always such a good kid. I don't know why anyone would do such a thing to him. You know? He was a good kid. A good kid. Hello? Okay. I'll be out there. Okay. So I'm told that you have information regarding the murder. Yes, yes, yes. I was training at my gym the other night. <laughs> yeah. Okay. And that was pretty fun. Yeah, that's pretty fun. Anyway, I looked outside and I saw this guy running past, you know? He was running out um, across, uh, whatever that street's called, Lawland Street or something, yeah. He was running across there. He had a hood over his face and stuff, you know? And um, it had red all over his hands, so it was like, hmm, okay. What plan are you from? <laughs> yeah. Anyway. So, I went to contact authorities, yeah? And the phones were dead, so I thought, hey, what a night. So I thought I'd contact you, you know? I'm just doing a whole murder mystery. <laughs> so I thought you might have something to, this might relate to, you know? Just might? <laughs> okay. Thank you. Okay. Give me a round, yeah. Yeah. You kidding? That's our guy. Yeah. Yeah, go rest him. Go. Do you have anything to say in your defense before I lock you up forever? I, I don't hurt anyone. 
That is not my way. Okay. You know what? I believe you, but... I think you're hiding something else. What is it? What are you hiding? I... I didn't want them to do experiments on me. So... I hid. My name is Flip. I am a mutant dog. Please. Forgive me. I will haunt everyone in this world. But please, forgive me. And don't let them do experiments on me. Let me live a normal life. With so many leads, I had to find some way to connect them all. I thought to myself that another visit to Rob wouldn't be such a bad idea. <sighs> Sorry to intrude on you again. I was just wondering. You did say that there was no entry, force of entry into your house. Yes, that is correct. Not many people have the keys to my house. Only myself, Peter, and a couple of folks from work. And where's your work again? We were like besties. I worked with him for so long. We we worked in like like ten years together. Ten years. I love that guy. He was so cool. Yeah. Yeah, well, he, he was working for me like two hour shifts, full time, two hour shifts, uh, by new, not part time, no. I paid him a, a reasonable fee, mm -hmm. two bucks an hour, mm -hmm. he did a lot for me, and I paid him a lot, we had, we had that good bond, that good worker boss bond. Peter was good. Kind, nice. Though sometimes I want to bash him up. Peter was a good kid. He did half of my work and half still got paid for it. Yeah, he was a good kid, good kid. Well, he wasn't a kid that, yeah, but he was still a kid. A kid at heart. We had lots of fun together. He made me angry sometimes. He looked after me. Not that it was anything worth killing her for or anything. But it was still good. But he was a good one. Yeah, good one. We still got it just now. He's up there somewhere. I'm still here. And we still got that friendship. And he he talked to me. Not many people talk to me anymore. Yep. Well, I've been Peter's doctor for like for twenty years. Yeah, most of most of that job, um, that company, come to me. Yeah, but they're like on a contract. They come to my clinic, and I look after all each one of them. But Peter was unique. He was unique, as as are most of them. But Peter was more unique. And with his illness and all. What illness? Yes. So, I was able to solve the case and put the perpetrator behind bars. The following is what happened. 
Peter was diagnosed with a rare condition from a young age. He suffered from Raxiphobionius, which is pretty mouthful. But in simple terms, it means he suffers from an allergy to tomatoes. He rarely told anyone about this, and only a few of his friends ever knew. He went to work at a brick building factory, as he believed that there, he wouldn't come into any contact with tomatoes. One of his friends, Edward, got mad at him for not telling him that he had an allergy to tomatoes, and thus their friendship broke. Peter left home sad that night, and went to his friend's house, Rob, as they had always been there for each other. When Rob was out of the toilet, Edward snuck in, using the key he had, for he was Rob's friend also. Poor Archie, seeing this, believed he'd just seen a ghost, as it was so dark that night. Edward attacked Peter with tomatoes, before making him consume some, resulting in killing him. This shows us our inner description. Edward then retreated and ran down Lawland Street, finally proving Matthew's story. And that's what happened. The end.